Hello and welcome to this short video presentation um, which will be uh, an introduction to the uh, MPhil in Polar Studies at the Scott Polar Research Institute which is part of the Geography Department um, here at the University of Cambridge. Um, I'm Ian Willis and I'm currently the director of the MPhil. Uh, I am a physical geographer, I'm specifically a glaciologist. And uh, there's a couple of uh, pictures here. This is just the uh, the front of the Scott Polar Research Institute, and here it is on a map. Um, and this is really just to make the point that uh, if you do our MPhil at the institute, you'll really be at the centre of uh, Cambridge life. Um, it's close to the Department of Geography. You can see there on the map a few other landmarks: the train station and some. Uh, famous a famous college and a famous pub um, and the other thing I wanted to point out was the British Antarctic Survey on the edge of Cambridge it's a, a short cycle or bus ride uh, between the Scott Polar Research Institute and the British Antarctic Survey and we collaborate with people at Bass um, and so as an MPhil student you may get the opportunity to go there at least and possibly work uh, with people there. Um, well, I'm, I've said that I'm welcoming you to this short video, but really this is on behalf of uh, all of us um, at the Scott Polar Research Institute and other places that are involved with our MPhil. Um, here's just uh, an array of the current and recent uh, people who've contributed to our MPhil in one way or another, either through lecturing or through supervising. Um, we're mostly at the Scott Polar Research Institute. We're sort of senior permanent academic staff, but also uh, research staff who are on shorter term contracts. And you can see a couple of people in there, uh, Fiona Danks, for example, who's at the World Conservation Monitoring Centre, and Kelly Hogan, for example, at the British Antarctic Survey. And that's really just to make the point that we're, we're connected to other um, institutes uh, within within Cambridge and um, I very much want to stress that uh, we regard our MPhil students as sort of part of the team um, they're very much should be very much involved with our uh, research and of course our research we like to think is key to understanding um, the, the planet and uh, thinking about the, the future governance of it um, a little bit about the building and people. We've got, we're a self-contained uh, building, as I say, at the heart of Cambridge, and uh, it houses around 60 people, um, and that includes not only master's students, but also other uh, postdocs working on their PhDs, academic members of staff, uh, research staff, um, support staff, and uh, people working in the library, in the museums, in the archives. And uh, just a few photos here to, to, to show you around the Scott Polar Research Institute. We have an extensive library, um, uh, one of the greatest collections of books and uh, monographs and uh, journal articles and maps and so on uh, relating to the polar regions in the world. Um, we have a museum. Uh, this has been relatively recently uh, revamped and uh, we get about 50,000 uh, members of the, the public that involves uh, school children but also um, members of the public more generally around 50,000 people per year come through the through the polar ex museum to look at the exhibits there um, we have a, an extensive polar archive and a picture library uh, collection the polar archives these again are, uh, are really uh, unique collections of uh, written documents um, to do with um, polar exploration, both Arctic and Antarctic, um, to do with issues of governance um, uh, associated with British expeditions uh, and British involvement in particular um, in polar regions. And the Picture Library, again, a very extensive collection of uh, both historic but also more uh, contemporary pictures from uh, both polar regions, uh, including um, some of the, uh, the original um, plate, glass, plate glass negatives from uh, Hurley, um, uh, from Shackleton's expedition and uh, Ponting from Scott's expeditions in the in the heroic age. Uh, there's a picture there of the lecture theatre. Um, the teaching associated with our uh, master's program typically takes place in that uh, lecture theatre, and uh, other talks uh, and presentations given by members of the institute, but also from outside, typically take place um, there. Two. Um, there are workspaces for um, all our students. Uh, our students have a designated uh, workspace um, and they'll be working alongside um, other um, postgraduate students working on PhDs and uh, researchers up, up in the, uh, on the top floor uh, of, the, of the institute. Um, 
a few um, what I think are, are real sort of positive things about the uh, about our MPhil program. It's a nine month degree. It runs from October uh, to June, so that's a little bit less um, than. Uh, uh, other master's programs in Cambridge. It's taught, so there is this taught element, there are lectures, there are practicals, and uh, but it's the emphasis is very much on a dissertation. So it's a great opportunity if you have a piece of uh, research that you've uh, worked on already and that you would like to take further, or you've become aware of a piece of research that you would really like to undertake and you need a few months in which to do it, this is a great MPhil um, for that. Um, it's at one of the um, top institutes for polar studies um, in the world. Uh, we're over a hundred years old. Um, the institute is over a hundred years old um, and um, it's interdisciplinary. There are other institutes, not necessarily as old, um, around the world but ours is one of the very very few uh, interdisciplinary uh, institutes so we span both the social sciences, humanities but also the physical and environmental sciences. Um, it's a long established MPhil. The, the master's programme and its precursor to the diploma um, go back to the 1970s. So it's very well established. Um, it's, uh, it's very successful as a result of that, I think. The students come, uh, apply and come from, from many countries, um, a diverse range of, of students and, uh, from, from countries and backgrounds. Uh, typically, we have around 10 um, on the course. So it's quite an intimate uh, group, of, group of people. You'll get to know one another and, of course, you'll interact with, with other members of the Institute. Um, we've, because of the, um, the age of the, uh, of the Master's programme and the, and the diploma before that, we've, we've got uh, have many alumni who've um, gone on to uh, continue to work in, in polar regions. And here's just a few examples of, uh, of our former uh, alumni, uh, ranging from a, uh, a, someone who's the director of um, International Association of Antarctic Tour Operators, um, one of our alumni is, is the owner and director of a, of a logistics um, organisation. We have a, um, a senior broadcast journalist with the BBC News, um, a politician, in fact, uh, part, uh, at one time the leader of the Norwegian Sami parliament. Um, he did a, a, a master's programme with us. Many of our master's students go on to do PhDs and many of them go on to do uh, postdocs. And some of them, of course, go on to become uh, academics um, in their own right. So there's quite a few lecturers, professors around the world in subjects such as glaciology and um, anthropology. And they um, came from our ultimately our MPhil programme. Um, we offer on our programme specialist teaching, training and supervision in two main areas. Um, we have these two strands, the polar social sciences and humanities strand, and then the polar physical sciences uh, strand. And typically students will follow either the social science humanities strand or the physical sciences strand. But of course, um, some students choose to take uh, modules from both of them. They might uh, do some of their coursework, um, their, their essays from one strand um, and some from, from the other strand. But primarily, um, we, we, um, we would expect students to be following primarily, uh, if not solely, one or other of those strands. Um, as I've said already, this can be regarded as a, as a valuable degree um, in its own right or uh, as a springboard to a PhD. Increasingly, um, to get onto PhD programmes, uh, it's necessary to have done some specialist master's um, course, and this offers that. A little bit, not much, about the, um, the, the, the course. The, the Social Science and Humanities strand um, is split into two modules, and there are uh, two-hour uh, lectures associated with each of these um, modules. So the first module there you can see is, is more um, about sort of culture um, and um, social aspects of the, of the polar regions, how we uh, understand about polar regions, how we gain knowledge about polar regions, how different people um, understand um, about polar regions. Um, and uh, the third pole I find quite interesting. Um, we tend to think of the polar regions as being either the North Pole or areas surrounding the North Pole or the South Pole, but uh, high mountain Asia um, is uh, often termed the third pole. And many of the uh, processes that are, that are currently uh, occurring and have occurred 
in the recent past uh, within high mountain Asia, in the mountains of, of, of India, Nepal, and um, China, and so on, um, have been operating in um, the uh, Arctic and, and Antarctic, sort of ultimately to do with issues of, uh, of um, globalization, for example. The, um, the second module here is uh, more about uh, sort of technological, infrastructural, uh, and, and political um, issues um, operating in the in the Arctic region as a section on um, different ways of that, how, how polar science is uh, undertaken and, and perceived uh, from an ethnographic uh, point of view. There's a section on um, tourism and, and the changing nature of, of tourism within polar regions too. The physical sciences strand, again, split into two modules. Um, the first module, uh, again, each of these is a series of, uh, of two-hour uh, lectures. The, the first module is about uh, glaciology, but also uh, glacial geology. Uh, and you can see some of the, uh, the issues that have been um, taught um, recently. And the second is uh, about polar uh, remote sensing. And uh, this will introduce students to uh, the general concepts surrounding uh, largely satellite uh, remote sensing. And then there are specific modules about uh, use of radar and optical uh, remote sensing. And um, students not only um, get lectures about these, but also hands-on um, practical uh, classes. Um, so f and, and there are case studies um, to do with glaciology, um, so mapping of glacier lakes from optical imagery, for example, or, or, or uh, calculating glacier velocities from radar imagery, for example. Um, so case studies from both glaciology, but also um, to concerned with Arctic vegetation um, and, um, and fauna. Um, so mapping whales and penguins from space um, is, is one of the, um, the, the topics considered in that module. Um, I've hinted at some of this already. There's, there's um, teaching and supervision um, throughout uh, the nine-month programme. Each of those modules consists of uh, eight hours um, of formal teaching. There's also guided reading um, and, uh, and, and reading, often reading groups and supervisions associated with that. Um, you can expect uh, your essays um, and your dissertation um, to be um, supervised, to, to, to gain the necessary uh, training and research skills um, and techniques um, throughout uh, the course. We also run um, separate um, research group seminars, both in the polar social sciences and humanities, and also in polar physical sciences. And these are open to absolutely uh, everybody within the Institute and indeed uh, beyond. And we'll get guest uh, speakers in again from Cambridge or uh, beyond. And the master's students are expected to uh, encourage to take an active uh, role uh, and participate in, in those seminars. Our master's course is examined, um, of course. Um, there are three essays. Some of these essays might take the form of a, of a, of a mini project, but there are three pieces of, uh, of coursework, each of up to 4,000 words long, and these are um, submitted at uh, nicely spaced intervals throughout the, uh, the first um, half of the, of the MPhil programme in, in November, in December, um, and in January. And it means then that from late January um, through to June, um, you can focus purely on your or dissertation, uh, which you would already have been thinking about um, prior to um, working uh, solely on it. And the dissertation is examined in the form of a, of a 20, up to 20,000 word uh, submission, which takes place in June. Um, some of our students uh, in the past have um, gone on to publish their research. This gets back to what I'm saying, which is our master's students are very much regarded as part of the, um, the research team at the Scott Polar Research Institute. So here are just a few examples going back to what have we got, 2013, um, of um, papers that have been published both in the social sciences and humanities, you will see there, but also um, on the physical science, environmental science side. Papers that have been published um, in uh, international uh, peer-reviewed uh, journals. And the first authors there are all former uh, master's students. 
Um, in terms of the application, uh, this is done through the main university uh, postgraduate admissions uh, website. I've put the website um, up there, but uh, that's available on many sites of, on the university. Um, you'd, you'd search for the MPhil in Polar Studies. You'd read through the overview, the requirements, the financial implications, and, and so on. Um, and then finally, you'll, um, you'll click the Apply Now um, button and, and fill in the relevant form. Um, what you will find you'll need, and it tells you that in the How to Apply section, are uh, a, a range of things um, that are written down here. But one of the things I want to draw your attention to is this research uh, proposal. Um, you are required to submit um, a short proposal, 500 to 1,000 word uh, research proposal associated with your um, application. And for that, um, you are very, very strongly encouraged prior to applying to contact a prospective supervisor. So you'd have a look at the Scott Polar Research Institute website, you'd look at the senior academic staff because one of us uh, has to be um, at least one of your supervisors and you'd contact one of us. You'd look at our research interests um, and you'd look at our web pages and you'd contact us and we could um, guide you through, we could advise you whether we think our, our MPhil program is the right one for you and we can also guide you through the writing of that proposal um, as necessary. Now on our website um, we've put some perspective, these are very generic, um, the sorts of things that you might uh, think about um, studying for, a, for your dissertation. So these would form the basis of your um, 500 to 1000 word proposal. But obviously these need to be uh, beefed up um, and so we would encourage you to contact a prospective supervisor to, to enable you to, to hone those um, topics or one of those topics. That's really all I wanted to say. There is of course uh, more information on the Scott Polar Research Institute and the Department of Geography at the University of Cambridge uh, websites about this, about our MPhil and about the application process. If you've got further general inquiries then uh, do please get in touch with the postgraduate office um, administrator, um, phone number and email address there. And then the key thing, if you're at all interested in, um, in, in doing our nine month master's program, and of course I would strongly uh, encourage you to think seriously about it, then one of the first things you need to do is to find a prospective uh, supervisor. And for that, you're gonna have a look at uh, the list of our senior academic staff, email them, uh, think about a project, and, and um, hone it uh, with the help of, of, uh, of myself or, or my colleagues. We look forward ultimately to um, receiving your application if you are um, interested. And I thank you for your time.